In this question, we have a baseball pitcher throwing a ball horizontally. It's actually very important to note that the ball is being thrown horizontally, and therefore we have drawn an initial velocity vector that's pointing horizontally to the right, and he's throwing that ball with a speed of 101 miles per hour. So we can actually label this as 101 miles per hour. And we know that the ball is going to travel forward. It's going to land 60 and a half feet away. So we've labeled the horizontal displacement as 60 and a half feet. And the question wants us to figure out how far will the ball drop vertically. So in essence, we are asked to calculate delta y. So this becomes our goal in the question. We probably know that this is a projectile motion question. And whenever you're solving a projectile motion question, it's always a good idea to organize the given information into the following type of table. So let's begin with the x direction and list everything that we think we know, beginning with the initial velocity. Now again, the initial velocity would be the 101 miles per hour because the ball was thrown horizontally. Horizontally would be the x direction. So we'll fill that in right here as 101 miles per hour. The final velocity in the horizontal direction is actually going to be the same value. It's important to note that horizontally, a projectile has a velocity that isn't changing. So if the initial is 101, then the final will also be 101 miles per hour. In essence, we can say that the acceleration, which is the change in velocity, is zero miles per hour squared. So keep that in mind for any projectile motion question. Assuming that there are no forces acting in the x direction, we can claim that the acceleration is zero. The time interval right now is unknown to us, but the displacement, the delta x, is given as 60 and a half feet. So we'll fill that in accordingly. Now to the y direction. Keep in mind that because the ball is thrown initially horizontally, that the initial velocity in the y direction is actually zero miles per hour. There is no motion of the ball vertically, at least at the initial release of the ball. We do not know the final velocity in the vertical direction. It will be changing. And the reason it's changing is because of the influence of gravity. We know that gravity will accelerate the ball at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, we don't know the time interval, and we are looking for that vertical displacement. So that is the big unknown right there. Now, hopefully it's obvious that we know more information in the x direction than we do in the y direction. So we're going to begin our calculations by using the values that are given to us in the x direction. The problem right now is that the values are given in non-standard units. We have miles per hour and then we have feet. So we're going to actually need to make a little bit of a change to these units. Let's start with the initial velocity again in the x direction. We're going to take the 101 miles per hour and we're going to convert it. Now in the textbook, they give us a conversion somewhere in the back in some table that one mile per hour is 0.447 meters per second. So basically we have to multiply 101 by 0.447 and this gives us an initial velocity of 45.1 meters per second. So that's nice because that's in a standard unit. And then we also need to convert the displacement to a standard unit. So we're going to take the 60 and a half feet and we're going to multiply this by a different conversion factor. The book tells us that one meter is 3.281 feet. Notice the way in which we've set up this conversion factor. We made sure that the feet are arranged diagonally so that when we multiply, they cancel out and leave us with meters. So basically you're taking 60.5 and you're multiplying by one over 3.281 and you get about 18.4 meters. So our next strategy will be to calculate the time in the x direction. The reason that that's a wise strategy is because once we know the time in the x direction, we can actually transfer it over to the y direction. Those two times will always be equal to one another. So we'll get the time in the x direction and to do that, we can use the following equation from one-dimensional or even two-dimensional kinematics. We have the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one-half acceleration times squared. And we'll note that in the x direction, once again, the acceleration was zero 
meters per second squared or miles per hour squared. So this acceleration is zero. That means when we multiply out all of this, that will go to zero as well. So we're really just left with this equation. We'll solve it for time so that we have a convenient way of calculating the time. And to do that, we'll divide both sides by the initial velocity. So now we have the displacement divided by the initial velocity will equal the time. We'll put the time over here. We'll take the displacement that we converted into meters, 18.4 meters, and then divide this by the initial velocity of 45.1 meters per second. And when we do this calculation, we're going to get a time of 0 0.408 seconds. So that's the time that we're going to carry with us back to our chart, and we're going to fill that in for both the x and the y direction. And now we have a little bit more information in the y direction. In fact, we have enough to calculate the displacement, the vertical displacement in the y direction. We're going to denote that as delta y rather than delta x. And we're going to end up using the same equation. So why don't we just clear out some workspace here so that we can see the values that we have in our table. So we have the vertical displacement is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half acceleration times squared. Now, in the vertical or y direction, remember the initial velocity was zero. So this term right here will disappear. And now we can just plug in the acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and then multiplied by the time that we just determined squared. Don't forget to square that time. So now we'll punch this into our calculators. And when we work this out, we're gonna get a vertical displacement of negative 0 0.817, and this will turn out to be in meters. Now, of course, the reason the displacement is negative is because the ball is falling downward towards the ground. So that should make sense. The question doesn't really want a negative value per se. They just want to know how far the ball would fall. So really what we want to do is just take the absolute value of this displacement, and that would give us a distance of 0.817 meters. If the homework system requires you to convert that back into feet, we recall from earlier that one meter was 3.281 feet. Notice again how we've arranged the conversion. We have the meters diagonally situated so that they cancel each other out. So let's multiply this, eight point, or this 0.817 by 3.281, and we end up with about 2.68 feet. So that will be how far the ball falls vertically. And the correct answer to the question.